Champaign, Illinois is the site of the third longest home court win streak against non-conference teams. It's at the State Farm Center and it belongs to the Illinois Fighting Illini who really could use a win tonight to try to get things going. They've lost three of their last four and they're taking on a Hampton team that's expected to do some big things. It's all part of Holiday Hoops presented by K. Jewelers. And with that, we we'll welcome you courtside alongside former Illini sharpshooter Sean Harrington. Adam Amin on hand now. The Illini have lost three of their last four. Granted, all three losses to pretty good teams, but this would be a night that they need to get their offense going a little bit. Yeah, they'd like to get hot from the outside, and they did that at the beginning of the year. Look for this home court advantage to get them on the offensive end and start making some shots again. They've played five of their last six games on the road, so they return home tonight, led by a couple of very good scores. Most people have figured out who Ravante Rice is, but Malcolm Hill, now a sophomore, had a really nice end of the season last year. He's off to a good start, although didn't play all that well against Oregon. Absolutely. The Illinois is looking for a second option to go along with Ray Rice, who leads the team in points, rebounds, and steals. Malcolm Hill off to a terrific start his sophomore year. He's got a great offensive package. Here are our starting lineups. Both Hill and Rice are in there for the Illini, along with Starks, Egwin, and Kendrick Nunn will make a second consecutive start. Meanwhile, Hampton, Quinton Chivas is their leading scorer. He's a Chicago native, so playing in his home state for the first time since going to Hampton. When Hampton goes man-to-man, -man, Keyron Brown, number 21 for the Pirates, will get the assignment on Ravante Rice. Yes! Gene Steratore, Kelly Pfeiffer, Rob Riley are officials. There's Edward Joyner Jr. who's had great success since he's taken over as the head coach of Hampton. Took this team to the NCAA tournament back in 2011. John Gross had taken this team to the tournament in his first year in 2013. Missed out just barely last year trying to get back to the tourney this year. It'll be McKeel and Egwu for the tip. Tossed up by Kelly Pfeiffer and the Illini start with the basketball tonight. They've lost three of their last four ball games. Again, those losses, though, to Miami and Villanova and Oregon. Trying to get back on track against an experienced Hampton team tonight. Need to get back to attacking as well. You see Hampton already starts out 2-3 zone. Penetrate those gaps. If you're Illinois, you can get an easy bucket attacking the rim early. Joyner said his team will mix in defenses over the course of the night, but we'll see some zone. And a good knock away by Kieran Brown. Pirates have won three straight. They're already 2-0 and in MEAC play. They're expected to be a contender for the MEAC championship this year. They've beaten Coppin State and Morgan State. And they've already played at Iowa, at Syracuse, and at North Dakota State. Now they play at Illinois. They've challenged themselves. Reset for Chivas, the Chicago native out of Notre Dame College Prep. Here's Kieran Brown for three. Off target, and the rebound for Kendrick Nunn, making his second straight start. Here he is. That's a three. The Illini trying to get going a little bit. Shooting has been a problem on the road for them lately. And that's Kendrick Nunn's spot. He loves the corners, especially from three. Not able to get that one to fall. The Illinois fans would love to see this team knock down a couple threes early to get back on track. Hampton adds two players to their lineup tonight as well. They have a transfer in Reggie Johnson and Emmanuel Okorobo, who had been benched for the first semester due to academic issues. They're both available tonight. Chivas tapped it back and went over the back of Malcolm Hill, and he'll get called for the first foul on either side. Good defense out of the gate by both teams. That time Illinois forces a tough shot and a great box out by Malcolm Hill on the weak side. And Illinois turned it over. It's a rare turnover. This is one of the best ball handling teams in the country in the Fighting Illini, averaging less than 10 turnovers a game. That's always been a staple of John Gross's team, teams everywhere he's been. There's Nana Egwu, averaging eight points a game. He breaks the scoring seal here in Champaign. And good job getting the ball inside. Good position by Nana Egwu. Good turnaround jump shot. You can see more of that out of Egwu going to that left shoulder jumper, left shoulder hook shot. Here is Kieran Brown going into the middle of the lane, and Egg was there to draw the charge. Very good penetration by Brown. He's able to get past the defender just one step too far. He needs to come to that jump stop right there and get that mid-range jumper. Great job coming over and taking the charge. Pressure here from Hampton. The Illini started 6-0. Coming off a 75-70 loss, though, to Oregon in Chicago at the United Center. They led the Ducks for most of that game. Too many mistakes late, John Gross said. They fouled jump shooters, ill-time turnovers. 
None is off target from outside again. Raymonte Rice is there for the putback, but out of bounds. And Gene Steratore, our lead official, says last touch by the Pirates. Getting a laugh, Edward Joyner with Rob Riley. They call him Buck, nickname. Here is Hill in the lane, and it's 4-0 out. Now the Hill averaging nearly 14 a game, coming off a season low against Oregon, just six points. He had a career high 20 against Villanova. That's pretty good performance. Yeah, and he's versatile. You see right there, post-up, mid-range jumper. He can put it on the deck. Also shooting well from the outside. He's got a great offensive package. Another charge. Malcolm Hill steps in to draw it. And already Hampton's leading scorer, Quinton Chivas, the grad student that transferred from Tennessee, has picked up two, about two fouls at the 17-minute mark. Hampton's doing a good job attacking the rim. They're just going a step too far. Illinois is in position, taking charges. That's a big blow for Hampton offensively with Chivas on the bench. They turn to Reggie Johnson, the transfer from Miami, Ohio. He's into the game for the first time as a Hampton Pirate. Ahmad Starks. Well, front side knocks down a three, and it's 7-0 Illini. He's one of those guys that needs to get hot from three, and that was good offense. Inside out was off the inside penetration, got into the lane. Starks able to step into a three. Shooters love to get those feet set. Starks got his feet set that time. Here is Johnson to Presley. Well, for three, the Pirates from the floor, but a second chance for Kieran Brown, and he'll go to the free throw line with a chance at a three-point play. Malcolm Hill called for his first foul, the first down Illinois. You mentioned how good of a defender Brown is for Hampton. He's also kind of the emotional leader of this team, and Coach Joyner said when things aren't going well, he's the guy who needs to step up for us, and right now, offensively, you're struggling. He goes and gets you an offensive rebound and an and one to get you on the board. Get some momentum. Nana Egwu is going to come out of the game. Maverick Morgan, the sophomore, checks in, something John Gross told us about. He wants to be able to save Egwu for the final eight minutes of games for his defensive presence, something that Illinois has struggled with late in games is their defense. Nunn. Patrick Nunn for two. Yeah, great finish by Nunn, but finishing up on your point, you can see Nana's taken out of the ball game right before the media timeout. That's what John Gross wants to do, work him around media timeouts so he's getting longer breaks of time but not missing as much action out on the floor. His presence late in games a little bit lacking because he's so gassed, a guy who's playing 35, 36 minutes a game over the last couple of games. Foul against Illinois will take us to a timeout. Ahmad Starks gets tagged for it. Illinois leads by six. They played five in the last six games on the road. They're happy to be back home. Illinois shooting four of seven from the floor, up by six early as you get a look at Buck Joyner, Edward Joyner Jr., the head coach of Hampton. Only two coaches have ever won 100 games in Hampton history. You got to go back to Hank Ford and Malcolm Avery. Hank Ford's the all-time winning as head coach. The Division I record for wins at Hampton is held by Steve Merfeld, who had 90 wins. And Edward Joyner Jr. is already closing in on the D1 record as the head coach of the Hampton Pirates. This is a team expected to do big things in the MEAC. And he was very candid. He's played a very difficult schedule. And when you're in a one-bid league like the MEAC, it's good to have some perspective. You're going to get your butt kicked sometimes early in the season, but you're getting tuned up to play in your conference and to win the conference tournament. Absolutely. And this is a team that's battle-tested already. You mentioned at Iowa, at Syracuse, at Illinois. They're going to find out a lot about themselves. They're going to find out a lot about this guy right here, Reginald. Johnson with a huge three. First game back, he's a transfer from Ohio, Miami of Ohio. It's his first points as a member of the Hampton Pirates. A little bit sloppy there from Starks, but he corrals. Aaron Cosby, who had started the first nine games, is into the game off the bench for the second straight time for the Illini. Hampton down three, Kieran Brown. Illinois going zone here. Switching into a man look. Ends up being a mismatch though here as a back down from Presley against Ravante Rice. Maybe a little bit of help from Morgan, but Ravante Rice on the mismatch is able to force a jump ball. 
Yeah, he doesn't have the height of Presley, but I'll tell you what, he's just as strong as anybody that Presley's going to see. Able to get that hand in there, tie it up. Right at, the, to the right at the end there, Sean. Little little elbow there on Ravante Rice as Presley got him. Shot clock down to 10. This is Deron Powers, Jr. out of Virginia. Step back over the taller Egwu. Good position inside by Aaron Cosby, the transfer from Seton Hall. Jalen Tate, sophomore out of Simeon in Chicago. Here is Rice in the face of Brown for three. We said it. Kieran Brown is their best defender. He will have the assignment on Rice when Hampton goes man to man. And he comes down to the other end and misses a three. Quick jumper by Johnson that time just coming off of the three. He's capable though. Had 24 points at Arizona State last year. Presley gets a breather for Hampton. Emmanuel Okoroba makes his season debut, five in blue for Hampton. Was benched the first semester due to academic issues. Reggie Johnson picks up a foul as he was guarding Rice. Talking with Coach Joyner at the shoot around. He likes this matchup. He's bringing two guys in for the first time. Says so he's exactly what he's going to get out of them. Playing a very good opponent. He didn't want those guys getting a false sense of who they were, having a good game against a small school. He says they're going to find out exactly what they have going up against the Illini tonight. Ron Black, true freshman, off target. Very highly touted recruit. Here comes Hampton down three, six and a half in. The two-man game, McKeel slicing in, and Egwu picks up a block. Not many have done it better than Nana Egwu in Illinois history. Here's Rice. Trying to go behind the back on Brown. Egwu can shoot it a little bit. It'll knock down a three. A career-high seven threes for Egwu this year. He's got a very good stroke from the outside. Good form. Rice setting up Egwu that time again. Inside penetration, kicking out through the trailer, which was a big. Tough for the defense to react to it. They're not used to picking up a five-man transition out behind the three. Foul called on Rice out of town. His first. These Illinois bigs run the floor so well. Usually you're waiting for them down in the lane. This time, Nana Egwu trails to play. Able to get his feet set. Rice finds him, steps into it. Good looking shot from the big fella on the outside. Hampton, 18 wins a season ago, but each of the last two years, they've got knocked out of the MEAC tournament in their first game. Reggie Johnson into traffic, just flipped it up wildly, and it got tipped in, and not sure who's going to get the credit for that bucket. But a couple of big bodies in Okoroba and McKeel were down there. Illini trying to take advantage of the bodies still on the deck, and Tate takes it in and draws a foul. A wild sequence there, and a foul against Ryan Darden. See, Johnson just gets it up on the rim. I think McKeel was the last one to touch it. He did a good job getting in there. See that right hand swats in there. The body's flying everywhere. Sophomore, Jalen Tate out of Simeon. Very good free throw shooting team are the Illini, led by John Gross, 77% as a club. It's my first time seeing a John Gross practice today, and I was really intrigued by him just because all the basics, all the fundamentals really seem to be taken care of when you're a John Gross coach team. And you are what you practice, and you see it so many times coaches want to take care of the basketball. Well, you have to take care of the basketball, and you have to practice doing that. He does a good job stressing that in practice. They chart their turnovers every single day and really do a lot of different drills, focusing in on those fundamentals, and that's why you see it in the game, and they take care of the basketball extremely well. 
Okoroba missed it. How about those long arms of McKeel getting a second chance? Could not finish, and it's snatched by Black. Illinois trying to push the tempo, trying to find an offensive rhythm, something they've lacked at times the last couple of games. And Maroba knocked it away with Egwu, the receiver of it. Here's Nana going inside, and he lost it. Hampton Ball on the other side. Herky jerky at times for both offenses as they try to find their groove. And Illinois shooting 5 of 11 from the floor. Hampton just 3 of 11 so far. But Egwu already with five points in this ballgame. ESPN's Holiday Hoops, presented by K Jewelers. Illinois up by six early. Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers. Now, Sean, you had some experiences with Rick Majera, so. Obviously, there's going to be some different things to look at and different perspectives with which to work. This is the 165 formula. Tell me about this. Yeah, this is how you find a good shooter. And Rick Majerus always, when we were looking to recruit a shooter, says, what's their 165? You had their field goal, their three-point, and their free throw. If that equals 165, it's a very good shooter. Very difficult to find a team with one. Very hard to find one with two. This Illinois team already has four guys above that 165. So you can see they're shooting the ball extremely well, not only from the field, but also from three. We said one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country as well. Rice is one of those great shooters. And 10 games at this point is probably a good enough sample size. Absolutely. You see guys that are two for two from the line. That's going to skew that a little bit. But it's a fun stat to look at. You think a guy shoots the ball extremely well, but maybe they just take a lot of shots and make some. Brian Darden, a cut off in the middle of that defense. Okorobo, a tough shot with the left hand. Good defense by Egwu, who's running the floor. Nunn's looking for him. And Egwu recoils. It'll be a jump ball. Possession arrow belongs to Illinois. It's called by Rob Riley. And then Egwu got tied up on the way up. Here's the swipe inside. A little surprised by that call. It looks like they kind of knocked it out of his hands. Yeah. And he regathered. Also in the replay, you saw Black and Egwu, the two first guys down the floor for Illinois. These bigs really, really run rim to rim. None to Egwu in traffic again. And this time Egwu will draw a foul that Buck Joyner is incredulous about. Deontay Adams, the junior. Hampton is called for the foul. Already six against Hampton. He said a good free throw shooting team. Nana Egwu at a six foot 11, 250 pound frame has made 10 of his first 11 free throws this year. Egwu's also done a very good job in this game establishing position inside, deep in the lane. I'm always looking for him. 114th career game for Nana Egwu. By far most on this team, and he leads all scorers with six. Illinois matches its largest advantage at seven. Out of the made free throw, a little 2-2-1 two, two, press. And Illinois will fall back into his own look here. They have switched defenses in the middle of a possession already in this game. Hampton wants to find one of their shooters, Darden or Johnson, against that 2-3. And Okoroba threw it away. Again, he's playing his first game of the season. He's been on a staple, really, inside for Hampton the last few years. He's a redshirt senior out of Texas. But he's just playing his first game this year. Revante Rice will come to the scorer's table, so he'll come in for Illinois at the next dead ball. There is Black. Top 50 recruit out of high school. Awkward looking shot, but Egwu's there for a second chance. Knocked away by Darden on the pass by Tate. Trying to feed it up ahead, and it's missed by Johnson. A little bit of a sloppy start on both sides. Darden couldn't corral it. Here comes Illinois. Cosby. Trying to settle in with a three for Kendrick Dunn, and he knocks it down. He's not going to miss two in a row from those corners. He loves that spot on the floor. Good find in transition. Hey, 
Largest lead of the game for Illinois. Hampton is one of its last nine from the floor. Tough three-pointer, and Duran Powers, who's one of their best shooters, knocks it down. Hampton back within seven. Last touch by the Pirates, and Illinois keeps it. Well, Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers continues this Saturday, part of the MGM Grand Showcase. Great matchup, number 15 Oklahoma, and one of the remaining unbeatens in college basketball, number 16 Washington, Saturday at 9 on ESPNU. And part of Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers. Lon Kruger is coach for you for one year before he went to the NBA. Monte Rice gets his first two points. And he's won everywhere he's been. Yeah. Kruger's done a great job at, a num at numerous schools and has really got the Oklahoma program in the right direction again this year. It's going to be a fun Big 12 season. Haven't really gotten a feel, I think, for the Big 12 just yet in non-conference. Here's McKeel. He can't connect. And an offensive rebound. Reggie Johnson left it short. Tip back out. And another chance as Brown has another second, or has another offensive rebound. And a good job attacking the offensive boards. Hampton needs to capitalize on this. This is their third opportunity on this possession. Need to come away with points. And Illinois stand in that zone look here. There's Johnson. Probably a good no call there as Starks was trying to draw the charge. Illinois comes out with it. Tough empty possession there, Hampton. Three opportunities. You gotta convert on some of those when you go on the road. And Malcolm Hill had a mismatch on a smaller Powers, but ends up turning it over. Quinton Chivas, Hampton's leading scorer, who picked up two fouls three minutes in, is coming to the scorer's table. Hampton looking anywhere they can for offense right now. Shooting 23% from the field. Shot clock down to 11. Powers off the Presley pick. Deep two is off target. Egwu comes flying in for a rebound. Hampton back in that zone look as well. Nunn, step back over Powers. Got the friendly roll. Nunn has seven. Illinois has its largest lead at 11. And Nunn had that offseason knee injury. Hasn't missed any time, but he needs to be that third option for Illinois. He's been very aggressive here in the early going in this ballgame. Good to see him on that offensive end. Timeout Hampton. 7.27 to play. Seven twenty-seven on the clock for the first. Illinois on top by 11. John Gross's team shooting over 50% from the field to start this night tonight. And Chivas back in there for Hampton. They couldn't wait any longer. They want this one to get too far out of reach. He's got those two fouls, but they need his offense on the floor. Keel working hard, trying to penetrate. And a three-second violation called against Hampton. 7-10 to play, and that'll take us to a timeout. John Gross happy with the defense that's being played so far by the Illini. The great run for the Illini in 2005, the Darren Williams-led team. Ended up making it all the way to the national championship against North Carolina. And John Gross now in his third season as the head coach of Illinois, already up to 50 wins, had this team probably one win, one big win away from the NCAA tournament last year, but did get to the NIT, made it to the tournament two years ago, and expectations were certainly very high. Obviously, Tracy Abrams' ACL injury in the preseason dampered the plans for John Gross a little bit, but there's still very high expectations for this Illinois team as they move forward. Yeah, and this is an important year, always year three of a coach coming in. Now these are his guys. He's right. got a couple recruiting classes in. He's got a very good recruiting class coming in again next year. But these are the guys that he wanted to play his style of basketball, and you're starting to see that a little bit more instead of having the players that were left over. Now this is the type of basketball he wants to see. So a very important year for Illinois. And they can have a very good season come Big Ten time. And Chivas for Hampton is playing with two fouls, the team's leading scorer. Rivante Rice is out there. Four turnovers early for Illinois. It's usually a rarity. You don't see that very often with John Gross-led teams. 
You haven't seen it much with the Illini this year at all. They like to play fast, too, and anytime you play fast and have single-digit turnovers, that's a good sign. You're getting lots of attempts, lots of opportunities to score the basketball. Shot clock at six. Cosby to Rice. Steps back for a three. Tap back up by Maverick Morgan, but Hampton corrals. Here is Chivas. Three minutes in, he picked up his second foul. He's back out there with two fouls. He and Dwight McKeel are the two top scorers for the Hampton Pirates. Chivas. And this might be a Hampton foul against Kieron Brown. And Gene Steratore just teed him up. That's the 11th technical foul that Gene Steratore has called this season. And it goes against Kieron Brown. Sunday on ESPNU, scoring threat Wesley Saunders and the Harvard Crimson. Look for a big win against undefeated number six Virginia. That's part of Holiday Hoops, presented by K Jewelers Sunday at noon on ESPNU. We heard it right here. We're sitting at the table. We heard Kieron Brown kind of jawing a little bit with Gene Steratore. So free throws plus the ball for Aaron Cosby here. Gene Steratore, Buck Joyner, and Kieron Brown chatting about it. And we heard it clear. He didn't say anything egregious, but just kind of expressing his displeasure a little bit. And he kept going a little too far for Gene Steratore's like it. Yeah, and when you're doing it right there in front of the official that just made the call, right. it's going to be a little obvious. Gene is an NFL official. He deals with a lot worse on a Sunday. He was in Indianapolis for the Texans-Colts game this week. He's got the Bears, actually, this weekend coming up. And they play the Lions. Very good position that time by Morgan inside. Yeah. He reposts again even deeper. Yeah, he's had a tremendously deep catch. But a traveling violation against the Illini. And that's five turnovers. Again, we're, this is a rare thing to see for Illinois. They average less than 10 turnovers per game with six minutes to play in the first half. They've already given it up five times. And you want to take care of the basketball and Illinois has done that this year. Johnson lost it, but a reach and foul is called against Illinois, and it's on Ravante Rice who has two. Egwell will come into the game for Illinois. Maverick Morgan will get a breather. And it looks like Rice is going to have to take a seat, and he will as Kendrick Nunn comes back in. And Rice with those two fouls. Don't want to pick up a third one before halftime. Rice averaging 18 points a game. That's fourth among Big Ten players in the non-conference league. And he has just two and two fouls. He's been playing great this year, not forcing anything either. His shooting percentages are outstanding. McKeel missed it. Comes Illinois, still riding its largest lead of this first half at 13. Not in panic mode by any means. Egwu really working hard for position. Cosby a three, and a line drive is knocked down for Cosby, who's really been scuffling as of late. He was four of his last 24 before that shot. And yeah, that's got to feel good to be able to knock one down, and a great extra pass from Malcolm Hill. He could have taken that himself. Instead, he finds Cosby in rhythm. Largest lead for the Illini grows to 16. Chivas at even three. He's trying to get going, and Hampton's leading scorer is on the board. It's a big shot by Chivas to stop that Illinois run, and none has got to have a hand up on the shooter. Starks missed the quick three. Chivas on the deck, tough step back, and he knocks it down. Back-to-back -back field goals for Quinton Chivas, and John Gross suddenly calls timeout as Chivas gets going. And that's a big shot that time by Chivas going to the baseline, step back. It was good D by none, just a good shot. And you can see why Coach Joyner put Chivas back in the ball game. Even with the two fouls, they need his offense out there. He's been able to get two quick hoops, deep three. His range, his range is right when he steps into the gym. This time none gets up on him, puts it on the deck. Good mid-range pull-up. Good offensive showing from Chivas. Son of former Missouri star Derek Chivas, the all-time leading scorer in Tigers history, transferred from Tennessee. 
had a decent amount of time as a freshman. He played in 22 games, but just nine games as a redshirt sophomore last year. He graduated from Tennessee in three years, so see, he still has two years of eligibility left. He's only played for two seasons, so right now in the grad program at Hampton. This team back within 11 now. Hampton continuing with that zone look here with Rice off the floor. Illinois wants to try to get that ball on the inside here off the dribble or the pass. Penetrate a good spot in that zone. The short corner Egbu was way off though. I've seen a couple of zone teams this year, Syracuse and Ohio State. They're teams that blitz the short corner. Illinois is not a team that's going to blitz the short corner, nor is Hampton in their 2 3 zone. Chivas has made two in a row. He's fouled, and he knocks down a three. Three straight buckets for Quinton Chivas. He cuts this down to a single digit game, and this was a huge problem for John Gross's team against Oregon, fouling jump shooters. Absolutely, that's the cardinal sin. Don't foul a shooter. And Chivas is lighting it up in another foul on a shooter. Chivas has him right back in this ballgame. Hampton is trailed by as many as 16. They're back within single digits, and it's because of their leading scorer, Quentin Chivas, who picked up two fouls three minutes in, so had to sit for a stretch. Ever since he's come back, he's been on fire. Absolutely. Most coaches like to get to the break with a guy with two fouls, so he doesn't pick up a third. But Hampton needed his offense, and you can see why. He can light it up in a hurry. Now, on the last one, getting fouled outside the three-point arc, chance for a four-point play here. He scored eight points in a row on the last three Hampton trips. They've scored 11 total points before that in their first 20 possessions. So Chivas, who had 12 points against the Big Ten team in Iowa earlier this year, already has eight. He's in more of a natural wing role. He's had to play multiple positions his entire career. And now that he's with Hampton, he gets to slide back over to basically a two-guard spot where he's at his best. Chicago born and bred out of Notre Dame College Prep. And as we mentioned going to break, John Gross told us multiple times late in the game against Oregon, Illinois fouled jump shooters. I think he tallied it up at four times that the Illini fouled a jump shooter who made it, got an in-one opportunity. You've got to stop that if you're the Illini. Absolutely. It went to ten free throws made by Oregon, and that's a big deficit to overcome in tight ball games. You get upset with your team when you foul them once in a game, shooting a jump shot. Happens three or four times. It'll cause your team to lose the ball game. Got clock down to ten. Here is Cosby. And he turns it over. Here comes Powers, and he twists it in off the glass. Down to a six-point game. Just careless with the basketball that time. Illinois a little too much around the perimeter. To get some attacking going here. Two paint points, that's it. A lot of jump shots for Illinois so far. Just look out of sync against this zone right now. There's Cosby in the corner and got it blocked by Javon Presley, his 15th of the season. Yeah, turnovers rare to see for the Illini. Yeah, turning the basketball over and leads to easy points for Hampton. Power is able to finish on the other end. Illinois needs to clean that up. Normally a very good team taking care of the basketball. Shot clock down to 11. Tate penetrates the zone. Got aggressive that time and took it into the lane. And that's the type of drive you're looking for right there. Whether it's off the pass, off the dribble, you have to get into that lane. Stay tuned. Brendan Fitzgerald, Dino Gaudio have our Cage Drillers halftime report coming up. 2.49 away. And the bonus. Jalen Tate really a pass first point guard does a very good job setting up his teammates 30 assists on the year only 10 turnovers so he really takes care of the basketball 
Starks, very similar numbers, 33 assists to 10 turnovers. So both guys have been running the point for the majority of the season without Tracy Abrams have been good. Chivas with his first miss of the night from the floor. And none corralled it, threw it away. Tate recovers it. Numbers for the Illini. And a great job by Hampton to get back defensively. Malcolm Hill. And Tate draws another foul. It'll be a bonus time for the Illini and free throws for Jalen Tate. Nobody had really been all that aggressive going to the rim. Jalen Tate the last couple of trips has been. And Tate, not a great shooter from the outside, so you want him getting to the rim. But he's done a very good job. Last couple possessions attacking. And usually that'll set up a teammate for a shot. Or you can get an easy bucket or get to the line. He's been able to get to the line here last couple possessions. Darden will come in. So Chivas is out along with Presley for Hampton. They'll get a breather with 225 left. Be very important here how Hampton closes out the half. Last two and a half minutes, Chivas, they don't want him to get that third foul. They need him in the second half, but Hampton's got to stay close here. So when he enters the game again, they don't have as much ground to cover. Going to the baseline and getting the right-hand layup in there. Very smooth from Okoroba, who scores his first two points of the season. And good footwork on spin, able to keep his balance as well. Nice shot by Malcolm Hill to draw the foul. He'll go to the free throw line here. Gene Sterator is checking with Kelly Pfeiffer, and it will be two free throws, I believe. We'll see. Gene Sterator might want to take a look at the monitor here I don't believe he was sure if it was two or free uh, two or three free throws coming up here for Hill we've seen now a couple each team with a foul on the shooter yeah, that'll be two that should be pretty quick yeah Darden picked up the foul it should be two free throws and I think pretty quickly they'll see that it is and Gene Steratore puts up two fingers for two shots Good heads up play. Malcolm Hill gets that defender to leave his feet. Able to draw the foul. And Hampton, same situation as Illinois. Just a few possessions ago. You can't foul those jump shooters. You've got to contest without fouling. A great matchup coming up on Thursday night. UConn and Duke. Part of the journey to the tourney presented to you by Sonic. A spotlight on impact games that could have an impact come tournament time. The defending national champions. A couple of surprising losses early in the season. Meanwhile, Duke has dominated for most of this season. It'll be a big game in the Meadowlands Thursday on ESPN at 8 Eastern. Also part of Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers. Duke is just playing fantastic yeah. so far this year. That win at the Kohl Center against Wisconsin could be as impressive as any team in the country. It's a tough place to go in and play. And they dominated, they dominated that game from start to finish. Going into that game, I remember the stat, Bo Ryan was 199 and 21 his entire Wisconsin career at home at the Kohl's Center. That's a rare loss for Wisconsin but against a very good Duke team. Okoroba with the defense from Jalen Tate coming over to help. He's got the strip, the pass to Hill. Missed the three. Nice position by Okoroba inside of Egwood. 90 for the first half. Lead has been as large as 16 for Illinois. At one point, a 10-0 Hampton run spurred by Chivas. Got him within six. 34-game non-conference home court win streak for the Illini. That's the third longest non-conference home court win streak in the country. Reggie Johnson off target. Rebound by the true freshman out of Memphis, Laron Black. Black's been in foul trouble this year, but when he is out there, he really rebounds the ball well. He definitely doesn't have the body of a freshman. Nunn flipped it to Egwu, who got space for the baseline. Number. Good first half for Nana Egwu, nine. He's a very good shooter. That time, mid-range shot. Got his feet set. Got on balance, a little off balance. Didn't force it, gathered himself. Went up and took a high percentage shot. Heel. It'll be a foul on the floor. No shot. 
Black. Ron Black picks it up. Best out-of-state recruit in terms of ranking that Illinois has had since they got Darren Williams. Darren was a West Virginia kid when they got him. Darren Cosby will come in for Black. Shot clock is off 33 seconds. Off the screen, trying to get Lawrence Cooks free. Lost it in traffic. McKeel got the two. Dwight McKeel, team's second leading scorer, has four points. It's a single-digit game. Illinois has the final shot. And McKeel does a really good job getting into that lane, using that long body, good smooth move. Finish at the rim. With two. Here comes Tate to none. A three. And he knocks it down at the buzzer. Jalen Tate setting up his teammates, getting the basketball to his teammates where they're comfortable shooting. Kendrick Nunn loves that corner three. Nunn, part of a double-digit point first half. He had 10 in the first half. At one point, Hampton got to within six, a 10-4 run by the Illini to close. After this break, Brendan Fitzgerald and Dino Gaudio have the K-Jewelers halftime report. In Champagne, Illinois led by as many as 16 at one point. Hampton used a 10-0 run to cut it down to six, but a 10-4 run by the Illini to close out strong. They lead by 12 as we get set for the start of the second half. Adam Levine, former Illini sharpshooter Sean Harrington. So, Ravante Rice, who has scored double figures in all 25 of his non-conference games while at Illinois, held to just two points in the first half. Illinois needed some help, they got it. Yeah, absolutely, and Rice had those fouls early on, so he had to go to the bench, and what's the next option? Malcolm Hill not playing his best game yet, and Kendrick Nunn has just been fantastic. He has stepped in and done a great job for Illinois in the first half. Ten points, couple of three-pointers, second straight game that he started the ball game after he started against Oregon as well. Yeah, and he's a player that probably needs to be a little bit more aggressive and try to get to the rim, maybe take a few more shots. He's shooting the ball extremely well this year. Don't be afraid to maybe force one or two shots because he's a very capable scorer and hit a big bucket right there before the end of the half. Our first half stats are brought to you by K Jewelers. Both teams actually shot very well from three-point range. They combined to go 9 of 19. Paint points dominated by Hampton in that first half. A lot of jump shots from Illinois in the opening 20 minutes. 34 game non-conference home court win streak for the Illini. That's the third longest in the country. Duke's got the longest by far, 114. The second longest belonged to Syracuse at 55. I did their game a couple of weeks ago where St. John's beat them, so that streak ended. Providence had its long non-conference home court streak snap. So Minnesota has the second longest in the nation at 40, and then it's the Illini at 34. There's Presley in the lane, a right-hand hook over Egwood. There is Ravante Rice, fourth leading scorer among Big Ten players. Egwu starts. Hill and Nunn, same starting five that began the game for the Illini. Thinking about it, Nunn takes and makes another three. Red hot so far, Kendrick Nunn, 43% from outside. Coming into this game, he's buried three tonight from outside. Yeah, he's really been playing well, and that's that scoring threat Illinois needs. Nobody got a hand up on him against that zone. He pulls up and nails it. Heron Brown with a nice flip after the step throw. He's got five points. Starks. That was smooth. So still a lot of jump shots, but they continue to fall for the Illini. And Starks has a very good mid-range game. Something he probably needs to look to do a little more coming off that high ball screen. Illinois loves to set those high ball screens. He has daylight. He's a very, very dangerous shooter from his mid-range shot. Pick and roll. Presley, that big body missed it. With Chivas got it blocked by Egwu. Nunn might need some help. Looking for a timeout. Did he have possession? He did not. He was tied up. Jump ball gives it to the Illini. Illinois able to start the half out with a three. None thought about it. Defense didn't react to him. So he put it up and in. He's got 
13 points, one off his season high against Austin P. Rice trying to get going. Not much going in that first half, just one of five from the floor tonight. Around the screen, Powers knocks it down. Presley set a nice pick for him. And Powers has seven. And both teams using that high ball screen. Good job by Hampton that time setting the high ball screen, and Power is able to finish with it. Gunn trying to corral it. Something I've noticed about offenses that go up against a zone, they fail to set a lot of screens up top. And these two teams have done a nice job of it. When they've seen the zone, they've run their normal offense like I think a lot of coaches wish their teams would do against the zone. Yeah, absolutely, and they both have point guards that are capable of breaking down the offense if they can get that screen. So you've seen Starks make some plays off of that, and on the other side, Powers has done a good job coming off that ball screen as well. Chivas made some contact with Kendrick Nunn. Kelly Pfeiffer and Gene Steratore are discussing. And it's going to be a foul against Illinois. Moving screen on Illinois and none seems to be okay. You don't want to pick up the foul and get your own teammate hurt. So Megwood picks up his first of the night on the moving screen. That was an issue for Illinois against Oregon too. Some late moving screens. Ended up being turnovers. Good follow by Dwight McKeel who's got six. Hit 14 against another Big Ten team earlier this year in Iowa. And Brown set that all up by making a deep defense collapse. Another moving screen by Illinois. Brown did a good job getting the defense to come to him. Opened up the inside lane for Hampton. He set it back-to-back -back possessions with a moving screen, this time on Malcolm Hill. So the same problems that John Gross was talking to us about against Oregon. Kind of popping up in this game against Hampton. Team out of the MEAC who was picked second behind North Carolina Central. NC Central was the team that went to the tournament out of the MEAC last year. Powers trying to split defense and a foul against the Illini. Lamont Starks picks up a foul. He's got two now. Jalen Tate come back into the game. Starks will get a breather. As we said, those two guys have done a really nice job in the absence of Tracy Abrams running the point. Had Abrams been healthy this year, Illinois would have been the only Big Ten team to return all five of its starters. Who was last to touch off the scramble? There is Tracy Abrams. Outstanding scorer, outstanding point guard for Illinois. He is going to redshirt after he tore his ACL in September. He'll be back next year for his final year. And just a tough kid, competitor. That's what Illinois really misses without him being out there. Chivas working hard, the second effort. Missed it close to the rim. Rice in traffic, taking contact. Trying to beat him down the floor with an un-three. Kendrick Nunn Good. on fire Four, in this game. Three. This is fourth three already tonight, tying a season high. And if you're Hampton, you got to run at Nunn when he's in those corners. He feels so comfortable shooting him. you got to get him off that spot, make him put it on the floor. He is deadly if he gets his feet set in that corner three. He's got 16 threes on the season. Four of them have come tonight. McKeel against Hill. Rice is there for the rebound. Levante Rice taking it all the way in. And it's thrown back down by Nana Agwu, who's got double figures tonight. Illinois matching its largest lead at 16. Hampton desperately needs a bucket. This possession to stop this run. Kendrick Nunn gets called for his first foul, which will take us to a timeout. But Nunn has been the superstar on the floor tonight. Already two threes in this half off the good setup by Tate. And Ravante Rice 
He's had a bit of a rough night tonight. He can't finish. Egu's having a solid night. 16-point lead for the Illini. So these two teams have combined to go 11 of 21 from three-point range. So when we talk about three-point shooting, we can't leave out my man Sean Harrington, who led the Illini in three-point percentage all four of his seasons, led the Big Ten two of his four years, part of some really solid Illini teams. Little late arrest action there at the end of that ball game. But 47-31 uh, lead for the Illini. I mean, you know, I, I wanted to ask you about this while we, were, while we were talking. You mentioned that Illinois had some shooting issues on the road. They've been on the road five of their last six games. They're finally back home tonight. Why is this a good building to shoot in? Every team shoots better at home, and you just get comfortable. That's where you practice. You play the most games there. You have a good feel for the rims. And it's just confidence. And right now, when you go and play five out of six on the road, sometimes you need that game to come back, get that confidence, and then you can carry it over to the road. But when you don't come back here for five out of six games, you lose a little bit of that form, a little bit of that rhythm. And this Illini team has traveled a lot. So they've been on the road a lot. Getting those feet and those legs under you, definitely an issue. Rice picks up his third foul, not even five minutes into the second half. We'll see if John Gross has to make a decision here. Okoroba to the free throw line for his first free throws of the season. What about this building specifically, though? Is there a background that you like? It's a little bit darker out on the perimeter by the stands. It's well lit on the floor, but a little bit darker out on the perimeter. What about this building do you, did you like? I enjoy just kind of, you said, anytime that it's darker in the background, it's, it's a big advantage to your shot. And it is a big building, so it needs to be a little darker on the sides. Otherwise, it throws off your perception a little bit. Kind of having that dark background's nice. Minnesota's a lot like that. You go into Minnesota, it's got that dark stands. It's a nice shooting background. I think the biggest thing is just getting comfortable, getting out there, getting reps before practice, after practice. Guys get into a good routine. See, Kendrick Nunn loves the corners. You know he takes a lot of corner threes in practice and warming up. Rice is off the floor as he picks up three fouls. Stripped away by Kieran Brown, loose on the deck. And it will be another jump ball, which will give it to Hampton. McKeel and Morgan went down to get it. Buck Joiner's team, as you said, picked second behind NC Central. They lost their leading scorer, Devon Maxwell, who was also the defensive player of the year in the MEAC last year. But that was mostly because he was such a good shot blocker. Kieran Brown, who we've talked about multiple times tonight, is probably their best perimeter defender. He's done a nice job when he's been tasked against Ravante Rice, although Hampton's played a lot of zone tonight, which has thrown Illinois out. Yeah, but he's got that strong body, able to cut off the drive. Powers got past Tate into Morgan. Ron Powers has nine. Hampton just kind of... Hovering around, staying in this game, down by 13. And good refusal of the ball screen that time by Powers. Why didn't I try to jump it? And he turned the corner on the refusal. Some tight defense here and a foul on Kieran Brown. Let's go back to that bucket by Powers. See that time Tate gets caught on the opposite side of that screen. Great change of direction by Powers. He's got that quick first step. Able to get into the lane, do some damage. Powers worked on a lot of ball skills in the offseason. Wanted to be able to handle it a little bit better. Said he wanted to be a better point guard, so worked a lot on dribble stuff during the offseason. It showed. Malcolm Hill. Maverick Morgan. That big body working down low and drawing the foul on Emmanuel Okoroba. Good footwork that time by Morgan. Wanted to get to that righty hook. It was cut off by the defense, able to spin back. Let's use the left hand. Morgan's going to have to play big minutes. Revante Rice is going to come back into the game. As Malcolm Hill will get a breather. John Gross said Maverick Morgan and Austin Colbert, who we haven't seen in this ball game tonight, but they're going to have to fill in some minutes for Nana Egro. Now, Egro is averaging about 27. That's fine for a guy his size, but at some point, you don't want him playing 35, 36 minutes like he did the last couple of ball games. Yeah, he does too much for this team defensively. He, he'll switch ball screens, trap ball screens. He blocks shots. He has to cover up for guys on that backside. So for him to 
play as many minutes as he is, he's getting worn down. So really important for Illinois to get that reserve in the five spot, whether it's Morgan or Colbert. Nice drive by Dwight McKeel. He gets to the rim. And again, just still hovering around the Pirates, down 13. And McKeel does such a good job controlling his body in yep. the lane, floating. Made some contact, though, but Kelly Pfeiffer is going to call a carry against Starks. Obviously, a lot of contact there from McKeel, but Kelly Pfeiffer from the opposite side of the floor saw the carry call and called it immediately. You see it here. Called it before the foul. I think it was that, that one right before, yeah. that last dribble right before the foul was called. So Kelly Pfeiffer saw it and called it. And Hampton has the ball down 13 with 13 to play. Probably is a carry. Just doesn't get called doesn't too get often. Doesn't get called very often. I was going to say. Here is McKeel. And he knocks it down. Down to 11. McKeel into double figures now. He's really got a good mid-range shot yep. too. You have to respect that mid-range. That's why he's able to blow by people off the dribble when they get into him on the shot. Aaron Cosby, good cut by Morgan, and he draws the foul on McKeel. Aaron, number 23, Dwight McKeel, his second, team's third. Morgan's been active here for the last the few minutes. Good move, possession before. Now since the ball screen rolls and Cosby's able to find him, we're going to get another trip to the line. John Gross, great pedigree under some great coaches, Herb Sendek, Thad Mata. Before he took the Ohio job and had great success in Athens, Ohio. And taking Illinois to a tournament and an NIT in his first two seasons. Egwu comes into the game for Leron Black. Illinois going very big with Morgan and Egwu on the floor at the same time. Egwu's going to have the challenge of chasing McKeel. There he is, and he knocks it down. He's getting hot. He's got four buckets already here in this second half, and it's down to ten again. Here is Rice, trying to get something going offensively. Into traffic and got it blocked by Okoroba. Hampton running the floor. Johnson lost it. Chivas got it and missed the layup. That's one that Hampton needed to have. Let's see if Illinois can take advantage. Nobody picked up Starks. A three. Five on four at this end of the floor. Okoroba comes down with it, and Chivas was at the other end, still on his back. Okoroba gets called for the traveling, but more importantly, the concern for the Pirates is with Chivas. A 10-point game, 11.50 to play, and Hampton's leading scorer has to get 10 to 2 right here. There is Quinton Chivas, Hampton's leading scorer, who's got eight points tonight. He took a pretty tough fall the last Hampton trip offensively down the floor. We got a chance to watch him walk around a little bit. He was grimacing and trying to maybe stretch out a little bit. Not sure exactly what the issue was. It looks pretty bad, obviously, on the replay, but we saw him walking around a little bit and not... I mean, I, it's hard to tell whether he's clutching at a knee, maybe the cap. Obviously, I hope it's just a cramp. And based on some of the looks that he was giving, he was grimacing and trying to stretch out, you hope that that's the, that's the only case it was, maybe just the cap cramp. It was almost on the explosion going up into the shot. And if that's the case, more than likely that is a cramp. And he's trying to deal with it on the sidelines. Maybe we'll put some pressure on That's the, the best sign. Drinking a lot of water very fast, usually a sign that it is a cramp. You don't forget, you hope that it is. Off the inbound and a traveling violation on Aaron Cosby, who left his feet. So down to a 10-point game, and Hampton gets the ball back with a chance to make it a single-digit game. Malcolm Hill will come in. As Maverick Morgan will take a seat. So back to that four-guard look for Illinois with Egwu in the middle. Powers was looking for Johnson who took a spill. Here comes Rice. Rice twisting, finishing, and going to the line. 
Just his second field goal tonight. He's got four. Ray Wrights is so strong. When he gets into that open floor, tough to stop him. He'll cross the defender over and finish with the right hand. He has scored double figures in every game this season. He has scored double figures in all 25 of his non-conference games. While a member of the Illini, he's got six points now. Illinois leads by 13 once again. This is right around where the lead has been for most of this ball game so far since Hampton had cut it to six at one point in the first half. Foul was called, and Saturday night on ESPNU, we'll get a chance to see some very good teams. A top 16 matchup, number 15 Oklahoma taking on one of the few remaining unbeatens in the country, number 16 Washington. That's in Las Vegas, MGM Grand Showcase, Saturday at 9 Eastern on ESPNU, part of Holiday Hoops, presented by Kay Jewelers. Oklahoma really testing themselves, their non-conference schedule. Yeah. Block on the inside by Hill. Oklahoma tried to find McKeel and couldn't. Here comes Rice out of the pack. Revante Rice trying to get going, and Okaroba gets called for another foul. Good unselfish play by Okaroba, but he turned down a two-foot shot to try to get a one-foot shot to his teammate, and that led to the turnover. Probably should just put that back up himself. And instead, Illinois gets the run out. Ray Rice just has a knack of getting fouled. Really likes to get his body up against those defenders. He is tough to stop with that strong body. Second year after transferring from Drake. We asked John Gross, I mean, is there a shot that he prefers? Is there a shot that he likes? He said no. I mean, every shot on the floor for Avante Rice is available to him if he wants. Yeah, it all looks good to him right now. And you got to give Rice a ton of credit. The year he sat out at Illinois, he transformed his body physically. Yeah. Lost a lot of weight. Uh, really became more explosive in that year. And then this year, he's done a fantastic job of improving his shot. He say works extremely hard, always getting in extra shots on game days. Frank Gross, he's got to throw him out of the gym some nights because Ray's still in there shooting. But it shows his numbers have been fantastic. And the jump he's made in his three-point percentage this year has been great. So he's done a great job the last two years improving his game in the offseason. Up to 48% from three coming into the game tonight. Johnson for the cutting McKeel, and a traveling violation, and that's four straight trips with a turnover for the Pirates. We're starting to unravel a little bit here, nearly midway through the second. And yeah, good find, Johnson found McKeel on that baseline. He's had that mid-range shot going, he could have just pulled up and knocked in. Hill stepping into a three, off target. 7 of 16 for three-point range of the Illini tonight. Very solid shooting night for the most part. We showed you that 165 formula. They're a little bit past 165 right now. Very solid percentages. And they're shooting extremely well. The team this is a different team when they're making threes. Obviously, when you're making threes, you're going to play well. But this Illinois team really needs that firepower be good offensively. Shot clock down to two. Brown doesn't see it. Now he hoists it up and missed everything. Shot clock violation. We mentioned that 165 formula. We showed you some of the Illinois numbers earlier this year, and it's something that, let's revisit it, Rick Majerus got into your head and basically adding up the percentage from the field, percentage from three, and percentage from the foul line. And if it's 165 or greater, you're looking at a good shooter. And as a team, Illinois is right around that number, a little bit higher, as a matter of fact, tonight. And always hard to find a team that has one or two of those guys. Illinois, we mentioned it has four of them right now. So they've got some shooters on the floor. Nice crossover by Johnson. Missed the shot. McKeel the rebound. That mid-range game has been good for him tonight. Illinois, uh, Illinois is able to clear with Egwu in the middle. Such a presence, Nana Egwu down low. Starks slipping. Rice stepping back. Nine minutes to play. 15-point game. Another turnover for Hampton. 
And Chivas will come back into the game, along with Okorobo. So good to see Quentin Chivas back in. Seemingly, and obviously we don't know for sure, but it looked more like a cramp in his right calf than anything else. And he seems to work that out. Revante Rice will get a breather and come off the floor for the Atlanta. 7 of 17 from three-point range so far tonight, Illinois. A lot of jump shots. But they have made a good percentage of them tonight. And they're a jump shooting team. They're going to take threes. They need to take threes. They've yeah. got good shooters. I want to see a little bit more just kind of attacking, get a little more of an inside presence, whether it's Nana Egru, Malcolm Hill. Those are the two guys. I'm going to try to play off of them a little bit in the inside. And also get that penetrate and kick three. Those are good shots for this Illini team. I was thinking about how they're going to do against the zone this year because Ohio State, obviously Aaron Kraft graduates, arguably the best defender in the Big Ten the last 10 years. And they go to a 2-3 zone, which Thad Mata has played plenty in the past, and John Gross obviously was uh, an assistant under Thad Mata. But kind of your thoughts as Morgan knocks it down on how Illinois has played against the zone tonight. Yeah, they've done a good job. They've moved the basketball. And you're always going to make more shots when you can go inside out. And they have to get that penetration. Shooters love when they see a 2-3 zone. And there's a lot of gaps to make threes, but you, you can get the same shot late in the shot clock as you can early. So you got to make sure you take good threes and don't force anything up early. Wave out the basket. It'll be a foul on the floor, a blocking foul against Malcolm Hill. Illinois number 21, Malcolm Hill, is third, team seven. It is one and one as Hampton is in the bonus, so Okorobo will go to the free throw line. 55th career game for Emmanuel Okorobo. Again, his bench the entire first half due to academic issues. Nice job by him to get that sorted out, cleaned up. And he's able to play along with Reggie Johnson, the transfer from Miami and Ohio. So two extra players to deepen the rotation for Buck Joyner's team as they move forward towards the Mia. new guys into that rotation so they're gonna have to figure it out a little bit some guys are gonna lose some minutes that have been playing for the first nine games of the year none slipped foul called we'll go against Kieran Brown it's 746 to play that'll take us to a timeout Illinois has its largest lead of the night the Illini are up 17 happy holidays from our family to yours I love the Orange Crush, one of the great student sections in college basketball. This place is going to be fun to be at when Big Ten play rolls around in Illinois. Their next five games include the start of Big Ten play. They'll play Missouri on Saturday. Our buddy John Chavi will call that game with Fran Fraschilli. He's watching tonight as the Tigers and Illini have the bragging rights game in St. Louis, Kennesaw State, and then four of their first five Big Ten games are on the road, including Michigan and a tough one against Ohio State. John Gross's old boss, Thad Mata. Those victories, obviously the schedule is going to even out throughout the year, but if you can lose, if you lose three, four out of the gate on the road, you feel like you got to build yourself out of the hole. Malcolm Hill with a difficult finish. He's able to put it down. Just another part of Hill's game. Backing down a smaller defender. Able to use the glass with contact. He has some strength in the offseason. <laughs> really transformed his body. He likes that contact. He gets to the line on average four and a half times a game. So. That's a great job of getting to the line. He's up to 233 pounds. Is Malcolm Hill. He's made a tremendous jump. He'll get a breather as Laurent Black, who's already at 220 as a freshman, will come into the game. He said Black is, is built. He's got a junior-like body already. He's just a true freshman. And he's throwing that body around. A lot of fouls this year. When he stays out of foul trouble, he is very good for this Illini team. See, great defense that time keeping his feet. Leads to an Illini break. Tate is going to throw the foul. The left uh, shot at the free throw line coming. Powers picks up his second. Illini with their largest lead at 20. So Illinois' schedule, as we said, first four of their first five on the road, they get Wisconsin once. That's good, but you have to go to Madison to play them. You get Michigan State twice, so they'll come in here, and obviously they'll go to East Lansing. And you only get Ohio State once, which is good, but you got to go on the road to take on Ohio State. So 
with all the road games they've played, John Gross was saying, I don't think anybody in the country has played as many road games as his Illini team has had to play in the early part of the season. Probably by February, they'll have more than just about anybody in the nation. Absolutely, and it was a tough stretch here. Neutral site games and, and road games in the non-conference, and then obviously you can't control what the scheduling does in conference, but starting on the road for two games, they're going to go through a 14-game stretch here, and 10 of them are in neutral sites or away. You don't see that from the power teams. Chivas right into Egwu. Nice recovery by Chivas. I really enjoy the effort of Quentin Chivas. He's battled through a lot tonight, including foul trouble and injury. The Illini come out with it. Egwu, smooth but short. It's a missed shot, but that's a good shot from Egwu. That's what you want to see, him going to that righty hook deep in the lane. Chivas a deep three. Off target. Looking for a cutting black. And Chivas tied him up. And got a little bit physical afterwards, but it should be a jump ball, which will keep it with Illinois. I like that. Neither player wants to give up the basketball after the whistle. Good tie up. And dark timeout, Illinois. The Illini will take a timeout. They've got their largest lead at 22. Six and a half to play. <laughs> Illinois off to a 5-0 start at home this season. They're up by 22. They've won by an average of 29 at the State Farm Center. Season-long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament Thursday at 9 on ESPN. Duke and Connecticut. A lot of hardware between those two teams. And Duke just one of... Nine remaining unbeaten in the country. TCU off to a great start. Villanova beat this Illinois team. You'll see Virginia on ESPNU Thursday night taking on Cleveland State. And Washington on Saturday when they get probably their toughest test of the year against Oklahoma. Powers got it blocked by Jalen Tate. Largest lead of the game for the Illini. Rice a three. And Black got caught up as McKeel. Ended up grabbing his arm. He'll get called for a foul. And Quentin Chivas got into it a little bit. And a little bit more jawing. And Rob Riley called a technical foul. So McKeel got that T. That's the second technical foul against a Hampton Pirate tonight. This is a physical team in Hampton try to get in your head a little bit. It's going to be difficult for MEAC teams. As long as Hampton doesn't get too out of control, it's going to be difficult for some MEAC teams to deal with the physicality that Hampton can play with on a nightly basis. Yeah, they've got some good size for that conference, and that time, physical play in the post. Around Black just continues to attack the boards. You've got to have a body on them at all times. And that time, McKeel just got tangled up with them a little bit. Felt that black was maybe over his back. But you got to control those emotions. So now this will be shots for the foul against McKeel. White will go to the bench. Richard Jr. out of Baltimore. Ron Black. Mr. Basketball in Tennessee. You hear the phrase, son of a coach a lot, you're one of them, but his mom was the coach in the family, a high school basketball coach, and his mom was the biggest inspiration for him on the floor. He does a lot of things a coach looks for, his yeah. motor, his energy, his rebounding. He talked about he's been in foul trouble, but when he's in the game, he's getting a rebound every 4.1 minutes. And that is best on the team. So when he's out there, he is very active, very aggressive. He doesn't care about scoring either. He gets his points just out of playing hard. Largest lead for Illinois at 25. Off another turnover. Tate walked. It kind of looked like, what was that NBA play the other night where maybe the, the, the greatest walk of all time, I can't even remember off the top of my head who had that walk called against them. Kind of reminiscent to that a little bit. Morgan comes in, Egwu gets a break. Nana Egwu has tied his career high, by the way. He's got five block shots. Fourth time in his career he's had five blocks in a game. 
So with those five blocks, he's now 13 away from tying Deion Thomas's all-time Illini record. He's sitting at 164 blocks. So he'll be the all-time shot blocking king in Illinois history by the time the season's over. Johnson knocks down a field goal. Good position that time by Presley inside to draw the double team, left Johnson open. Monte Rice. Monte Rice. Trying to keep that stretch of double-figure scoring games and non-conference play going. Count the basket as Chivas came back down the floor. And he's able to go to the free throw line with a chance at a three-point play. Looks like identical plays back That's to right, Black. Yeah. Rice with the strong move to the basket and Chivas answers. Chivas at the line shooting one. Chivas double figures tonight. He's needed double-digit shots to get there, but... He was the biggest reason Hampton was even in this game in the first half and still in it relatively early in the second. Ian McKeel. Rice turned it over. He was looking for Black underneath. Chivas into a couple of bodies for the Illini. It stays at this end of the floor. So give me your thoughts on the Big Ten. Obviously, you know, Wisconsin got all the play early part of the season. Obvious reasons, well-deserved. But what about the rest of this league? Michigan State up and down a little bit. Ohio State hasn't gotten a ton of recognition, even though they're a top-15 team. What are your thoughts so far? Yeah, it's probably the most balanced I can remember this conference being. Two through almost 10, 11. It's going to be very deep. Anybody can come out with it right now. Michigan State has had three tough losses, played very good teams. Ohio State has looked good. They haven't played a great team yet. Obviously, that game against Louisville, that was their loss. But this can be a very, very balanced year for the Big Ten. And home court is going to be so important. You have to defend your home court when conference play begins. So Rice can breathe a sigh of relief. He's into double figures after a slow start. He's got a dozen tonight on 12 shots. Maryland, don't forget, is part of the Big Ten this year. So now it's a 14-team conference. Maryland and Rutgers come in. Maryland's playing really well. They'll have Des Wells probably by the start of conference play. That would be big to get him back. They were playing so well when he was there. Mm -hmm. Beat Arizona State and Iowa State in the tournament in Kansas City before he got hurt. And we lost to a good Virginia team. We'll, sh we'll show you a snapshot of the Big Ten on the other side as we wrap things up from Champaign. Four minutes to play. Ravante Rice can breathe. He's got a dozen points tonight. Looks like the University of Illinois, downtown Champaign. 70 to 44, Illini have the lead as we close out. And Friday night, ESPNU brings you a matchup you probably have seen before. Ninth time in the last 10 years that Wisconsin, Whitewater, and Mount Union, the best Division III football rivalry, will square off for a national championship. Whitewater has won five of those meetings, Mount Union the other four. That's on ESPNU and watch ESPN. Friday night at 7 Eastern, the final game as head coach for Whitewater for Lance Leipold before he takes over as the head coach of Buffalo. He'll take over that Bulls program. So Sean and I were discussing the Big Ten on the prior, uh, prior to the break. You said Maryland's off to a good start, Penn State, Wisconsin. Just give me your thoughts, because obviously everybody knows Wisconsin and Ohio State, Michigan State. Kind of just give me one more synopsis of what you think the league's going to be. Yeah, Michigan's the one that's kind of had the disappointing non-conference so far, and Penn State is a team that I think can make some noise finally in the Big Ten. Pat Chambers done a fantastic job with that program. Look out for Penn State to maybe be right in the middle of the pack in the Big Ten this year. Well, he said it. Had Illinois returned Tracy Abrams, they'd be the only team with five returning starters. But there's a handful of teams that have four returning starters in the Big Ten. Illinois is one of them. Nebraska, Wisconsin, Northwestern, and Penn State all return four starters. Penn State's lost Tim Frazier, but... DJ Newell's off to a red-hot start in the non-conference season. Yeah, he's scoring 20-plus numerous times this year, and he's got a couple weapons around him. Brandon Taylor has had a good season so far. He's got a few weapons that can put up some points, and it's a tough trip to go into Happy Valley, and they're starting to fill that place a little bit more, get a little yeah. bit of momentum at home. Toughest home court you always thought of when you thought of the Big Ten. Outside, obviously, Illinois is a great home court event. What was always a tough place for you to play specifically? 
Indiana was always very difficult yeah. in, in our time when it's there. That's probably the loudest stadium in the Big Ten when it's full. And then Michigan State's always done a fantastic job for the home court advantage as well. Rice's night ends. 12 shots, but he got 12 points. Added five rebounds as well. He had some foul trouble tonight. You saw Mike Latulip, the junior out of Arlington Heights, Illinois, check into the ball game. Suburban Chicago boy. Seventy to forty-four. A lot I have the lead. Stark Scott free. Morgan tipped it up and Chivas corrals it. Powers knocks it down. And a timeout for Buck Joyner. Something interesting that Buck Joyner told us about this season was with those two additional players that he gets back, he was thinking about maybe going to the Kentucky-style platoon system. So these are the next five games that they have. At Bethune-Cookman, that's the opener of MEAC play. You'll see the game against NIU on Monday night on ESPN3. Sean will be there for that. So the depth all of a sudden is there. This team's already 2-0 in MEAC play. They played a couple of December games coming off the win against Morgan State. Hampton's going to be a tough team. They play with physicality. Obviously, it's not necessarily easy to see against a big team like Illinois, but they're going to be a tough out in their conference no matter what. Yeah, and you got two guys coming back. Johnson is, is only going to get better as the season goes on. First game, tough to come on the road at Illinois and play against this team. And so he likes his depth, and that's part of the, the reason why he scheduled this, this many non-conference games and tough opponents. He wanted to kind of throw these guys out there and see what they had a little bit to prepare them for conference. New Mexico State and Baylor when we're done here. There's Austin Colbert with his first shot attempt of the night, so Colbert gets some minutes late. Powers. Rebound for Cosby. I saw a lot of Aaron Cosby at Seton Hall. He was good. Latula hits a three. Something to cheer about for this Illinois fan base. Tell you what, Mike Latula is instant offense. <laughs> when he gets in these games, you can guarantee he's going to knock down a three. Career high this year with 22 points already on the season. He's four of seven from three-point range. Gotta love it. Here's Chivas. Got it swatted from behind by Colbert. Illinois, a very good shot blocking team. A lot of it, obviously, is Nana Eglu. Presley comes back with a rejection into the band. So Illinois, a minute 52 away from extending their non-conference home court win streak. They'll get it up to 35. Only Minnesota and Duke have longer non-conference stretches going right now. It's going to be so important to take care of the home court advantage when you're playing in conference play. So Illinois needs to continue that streak. Mexico State and Baylor coming up when we're done here from Champaign. Baylor, a team that Illinois saw early this season, part of the 6-0 start for the Illini. Baylor, another one of those teams in the Big 12. Big 12, you talk about balance in the conference, tough. Every single night's going to be a tough opponent. Obviously, the championship goes through Kansas there until somebody knocks them off. They're going to be the team to beat. They've got some contenders this year, Texas, Oklahoma, Iowa State, all very good teams this year. Very competitive last year. TCU, if they can make an impact like they have in the non-conference, all of a sudden that becomes a scarier conference. Cosby just hoists a three off target. Philip Reed into the game for Hampton, 6'10 sophomore out of California. Both teams kind of emptied out their benches. Donald Rawls, a freshman out of Philly, is into the game. Keith Carroll, freshman out of Valencia. Johnson still on the floor. Here is Gregory Hayden at 5'7, the sophomore out of Dallas, putting in two. Short guys everywhere stand up and rejoice. 
at 12 on the clock. Illinois obviously shot the ball a lot better from three today in the last couple games. It's good for Illinois fans to see. 15 turnovers for Illinois, something that's very rare for the Illini to see. So certainly something that John Gross is going to address as they get set for Missouri. It's a season high in turnovers for the Illini. There's a three for Reggie Johnson, his second of the game, and a whistle to get a sub in, and Cameron Liss, the walk-on, out of Northbrook, Illinois, will come into the game. So LaRon Black's night is done. There's Cameron playing in his sixth career college game. Black, very solid night tonight. Eight rebounds. Only two points, but you said it. He's not out there to score. He's out there to grab boards. And he had a career-high tying eight this evening. He's done it twice against MEAC teams. Coppin State, the other. Cosby was looking for Colbert. 24 seconds left. So Illinois will move to eight and three on the season. And Missouri's coming up on Saturday from St. Louis. The traditional brag and rights game we'll get set for Big Ten play starting up against Michigan on the road John Gross to his 51st win already with the Illinois Fighting Illini Hampton has its three-game win streak snapped. Illinois, which had lost three of its last four coming in, comes away with a 73 to 55 score over Hampton tonight. We'll have an interview with John Gross coming up. Here from Champaign, our final score once again, 73 to 55. Illinois with the victory. New Mexico State and Baylor are coming up. Illinois led by 16 in the first half. At one point, got it trimmed down to six. Go to run once again by the Illini to take the lead. And they eventually pull away for a solid win tonight. Kendrick Nunn had a great night tonight to lead the Illini with 16. He's with Sean Harrington. Kendrick, another great shooting night for you. What is it about the corners that you're so hot? Uh, I'm not sure. I just work on the corners and practice, you know. Um, I take them in the game. You guys got a big rivalry game coming up against Missouri. What are you looking to do for that ball game? Uh, we're just coming out looking uh, to play hard, compete, and uh, hopefully we get a W. You guys hit, lost three out of four. Always good to come back home. You feel more confident? Can this carry over to the next game now? Most definitely. Uh, we we uh, take this game to bring our confidence back on defense and offensive side. Hopefully they carry over throughout the season. All right, good job tonight, Kendrick. Good luck. In. Kendrick Nunn had six field goals on nine shots, four of six from three-point range, finished up with 16 points, four boards, and three assists. Sean Harrington, back to him. He's with John Gross. Coach, always good to come back home. You guys have been on the road quite a bit. Turnover is another issue tonight. How do you clean some of that up? Well, we can't be that sloppy, Sean. I thought early in the zone they were playing our passes and our guys were just throwing passes flippantly. You got to check your passes. I thought Tate in the first half figured out what they were doing and started to gut their defense. Another great night for Nana Egru, offense and defensively. Very productive, four out of six from the field and five blocks. What does he mean to this team? Well, he means a great deal. Not only offense, defense, but what he means to our team off the floor with his leadership, his communication, and his character. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Happy holidays. Thanks very much to Coach Gross. For Sean Harrington, Adam Amin saying so long from Champaign, Illinois. 35 straight non-conference victories for the Illini. They moved to 8-3. Adam Amin saying so long from Champagne back to the studio. Brendan Fitzgerald.